are on the Florida Turnpike, uh, heading south, and our destination is Big Pine Key and the Sunshine Key RV Resort. First time in the Keys, and beautiful weather for this. Seven Mile Bridge, just south of Marathon Key. I believe this is the longest uh, overwater bridge in the United States, not in the world, but in the United States. And it's not quite seven miles long, it's 6.7 miles long, but it's pretty impressive anyhow. And on the right's the old bridge that uh, became unsafe, so they built this bridge to replace it. Today we are exploring Marathon Key, and our first stop is the Crane Point Hammock Nature Center. I hear they have some good trails, birds, other natural things, we'll see. features of this preserve is a cracker house. Florida crackers were basically cowboys and they were named after the crack of a whip when they were herding Florida cows and uh, so this is an example of what kind of a home they might have lived in. tree the tourist tree because its bark is red and peeling just like most of the tourists. Actually it's called a gumbo limbo. I think this fish pedicure thing is that we're supposed to put our feet in the water with fish and they're gonna nibble at our toes or something. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Do you want to get your toes nibbled on? No, I don't think so. I don't like pedicures. I will make <laughs> only room. had one in my life. <laughs> And uh, this is probably not going to be the second, among other things, so I bet the water is cold. Oh, man. Well, they're not going to give you pedicure unless oh, you put them all the way cold. in. It's cold. How's it feel? <laughs> it feels ticklish <laughs> when they start nibbling. Okay, there's a big one. Ah! All right, what do you, what's your verdict there, Kathy? A uh, once-in-a-lifetime experience. <laughs> Some of them are a little larger and you can really feel them. You can really feel them on the bottom of my feet. It doesn't hurt, it just feels interesting. All right, Kathy did it, so I've got to try it to get in a fish pedicure. I'm really not sure about this, but I'll give it a go. It is cold, right? <laughs> I'll lift my feet up so you can get all of them your way. <laughs> oh my god, it tickles. See, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta do this. If you come here... <laughs> See? <laughs> If you'd like to get a sense of the history of what the Florida Keys used to be like before European settlement and learn more about the ecology of the area, Cranes Point Hammock uh, is a great place to do it. We give it two thumbs up. Today we're heading out on an excursion to Key West, which is about an hour's drive from our campground here. And since we're traveling with dogs, we have to make a few preparations before we head out. We need to give them a good walk. 
make sure they have plenty of fresh water, set up our temperature monitoring system and our doggy cam so we can check in on them, make sure the air conditioner is set in case it does get too hot in here, we close all of the blinds so the dogs can't see what's going on outside, and put on some nice music so they've got something to listen to while we're gone. Playing a little music also drowns out any outside sounds so they don't start barking. Well, we made it to Key West and our first stop is a butterfly museum and then Ernest Hemingway's house, we think, and then explore from there. It's a beautiful, fun little town. Mm, beautiful day too. Beautiful day. The Butterfly Conservatory is simply magical. From going to the introductory film area, you open the door and you step into the land of butterflies, and they are everywhere. It's so beautiful, all different colors, sizes even. Lots of chance for hundreds of photos, more than you could ever look at again, but I love it in there. have a lot of different bird species too, more like tropical birds, and those are beautiful too. It's easy to miss some of them because people are so focused on the butterflies, but it is one of the definite must-do's highlights of Key West. You look too much like you're the butterfly right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Here comes the famous conch train. We're about to start a tour of the Hemingway House and Museum. Ernest Hemingway lived here in Key West for a significant part of his life and wrote some of his more famous books while he lived here. Married at the Hemingway House, they have a place for weddings and for receptions, although considering that Hemingway himself was married four times, I'm not sure this is a good luck place to get started. If you get a chance to come to the Ernest Hemingway Museum, be sure to take the tour. It's free and the tour guide uh, really, really knows and loves Ernest Hemingway with some great insider stories. We're only 90 miles from Cuba, so it seemed appropriate to try some Cuban food. Okay, so this has got ham, pork, pickles, lettuce, tomatoes, Swiss cheese. On a Cuban bun. Mm. <laughs> good? That's good. That's got a lot of flavor. Lots and lots of flavor. That's enough for like three meals. Fernandes Cafe. What are those great off the beaten track finds, thanks to Kathy. Hi, Tucker. Oh, you got your rooster. Hello. Oh, hello, Mitzi. Yes, hi, Oliver. Oh, good dogs. So we went in search of the elusive key deer. They're very, very small, about the size of a large dog went to the wildlife refuge and uh, crept down the trail, exploring very quietly and carefully so that we might find one. And and uh, where did we find one? On the road. On the Not road. like dead on the road, but walking across the road, grazing in people's yards. Um, so I say quite like the white-tailed deer up north, 
that are used to grazing in people's yards and eating their flowers and that kind of stuff. Um, it was pretty cute to see, uh, gosh, close to a dozen deer hanging around in front of a, um, a door to one of the houses across the street, just kind of waiting, looked like they were waiting for dining to open up for the evening. <laughs> yeah, I kind of suspect that uh, the people who live in that house might feed them sometimes. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, not today. They're on their own. We're at Long Key State Park, and today we are going to do some ocean kayaking and getting signed up now uh, to rent kayaks, which are really pretty reasonably priced here uh, compared to some of the commercial vendors. It looks like it's going to be a hot day out on the water, but hopefully we'll see something interesting. <laughs> Is a future coconut tree. Ooh, and a crab oh, underneath it. Did you see oh, that? Yes, I did. That blue tentacle that's hanging over the edge of the paddle on the left actually trails out about a foot, foot and a half behind it when it's in the water. Portuguese man of war. The, see the sail on the top that it uses to let the wind move it through the water. After a hot day uh, kayaking at Long Key State Park. Uh, we decided we'd stop for a little bit of uh, coffee at the Coffee Loft. And what a cute place. They've got lots of uh, good looking things to drink and eat and it's just really kind of funky. delicious too. Today we're catching the ferry and we're going to explore historic Pigeon Key. <laughs> This is not one of the attractions that you're going to find in uh, most of the tour guides. In fact, the way we discovered it was because our campground is just on the southern side of the famous Seven Mile Bridge uh, from Marathon Key to Big Pine Key. And uh, as we're going across the bridge, there's these this big yellow sign that says uh, Tour Pigeon Key. And after driving past it a number of times, we thought, well, what the heck is Pigeon Key? So we looked it up, and it's a historic place that was used for building the railroad that is the center of the modern development of the Keys. The building behind me was the original gang quarters for the railroad construction uh, here on Pigeon Key. It was built in 1908. I mean, that looks pretty good for a building built in 1908. In fact, it has survived at least two devastating hurricanes, the Labor Day hurricane of the early 1900s and uh, Hurricane Irma back in 2017, both of which pretty much wiped everything out. But this building still stands. After the Labor Day hurricane back in the 1930s, the railroad went bankrupt and for a while it sat. And then eventually the state of Florida bought the entire bridge along the route from Miami to Key West and they built a road. This road was super, super 
narrow, just barely big enough for two cars to squeeze by. They used to call it the mirror bridge because trucks that forgot to fold in their mirrors would get them knocked off by trucks going the other direction down the bridge. That's how little room there was. And being that it's us, after our trip out to, uh, to see Pigeon Key, what are we gonna do next? Lunch. Lunch. We're gonna eat. And we're going to try deep fried key lime pie, which is one of the favorites down here in the Keys. And we're told they have awfully good Cuban pork or ribs. So we're hungry. We're hungry and we are at Porky's Bayside. The signature dish here is fried key lime pie. That looks stuck out. Once in a lifetime treat and very good. So it's cold and firm on the inside. I think they froze it. And it's soft, delicious on the outside with a crunchy kind of a crust to it. I got to admit that when I first heard about this idea, I thought that just sounds like a gimmick. <laughs> but a good this, gimmick. Yeah, this is a really good gimmick. This is delicious. We really loved our time in the Florida Keys. You know, it's really a little bit of a challenge to get there. There's limited reservations, it's expensive, and it's, it's a long drive, even from somewhere in Central Florida. But all in all, uh, I would say we definitely think it was worth it. We hope to go back again uh, sometime sooner rather than later. Thanks for joining us. And if you enjoyed this video, would you please give us a thumbs up and better yet, subscribe. And remember, life's a journey. Make every mile count.